All right, welcome back. So we are now done our third day of the TI-10 main stage. We are halfway done uh, when it comes to actually the amount of days that we have at the main stage. We are done day three of six, and this was actually the last day that we're gonna be having four series uh, in a day. From now on, it's gonna be three series a day, other than the grand finals, which is obviously the lower record finals and then the grand finals itself. Um, so yeah, halfway through, we now have, I believe, our bottom uh, eight teams from the actual bracket, in addition to the two teams from the group stage. Uh, so now we are down to just our top eight teams. And funnily enough, it is just our upper bracket teams remaining. Uh, not a single team that started in the lower bracket has made it past the second round of the lower bracket. So, uh, yeah, starting off with our uh, series for today, like I had mentioned yesterday in my preview, uh, we are starting off in the lower bracket today with some more elimination series. Uh, we started off with T1 versus Alliance. Of course, T1 losing their series against PSG LGD in the upper bracket uh, against Alliance, who had just come off of a uh, pretty back and forth win against Beast Coast. Uh, they, they are, of course, the fourth seed uh, and eighth seed of the same group. They had played against each other before. And in that group stage, T1 actually beat Alliance 2-0. Uh, game 1 being very similar to the series that we saw today, uh, where it was quite one-sided, pretty T1 dominated. But then Game 2 is actually one of the more back-and-forth games of the group stage, one of the best watches of the group stage. Um, so just in case you missed out on that, Game 2 of the group stage between Alliance and T1, definitely check that out. But we did not really get any of that back-and-forth in this series, or any of that really today. Uh, a lot of the games that were on today were really one-sided and just really just pure domination from the winning side. Um, so starting off uh, in game one, like I mentioned, it was just T1 from the start, just not giving any openings. Uh, they just went with a classic draft and Alliance just had, again, no openings, no opportunities. And it was like this for both games. Uh, Alliance just really did not look like they had any chance to come into either of these games. And whether that's a drafting error or just a play error, completely subjective, but uh, uh, T1 definitely looking good, definitely looking like they're bouncing back after that loss uh, against PSG LGD yesterday, which was a pretty close loss. It's not like they just got 2 0 by PSG. They actually took a pretty f exciting game off of them uh, in that series. So uh, with that win, uh, they're actually on opposite sides for both. They won on Dire first pick in game one, then they won on Radiant second pick in game two. Uh, both of the kill scores were pretty fa heavily favored for T1, uh, 35 to 13 and 44 to 14, and both games won in just around 35 minutes. Uh, so with that, T T1 secures top eight of the lower bracket, where they would move on to face the winner of this next series I'm going to be getting to. Meanwhile, Alliance is now eliminated, um, and they finish uh, ninth and twelfth place, the second round of lower brackets. And they earn themselves eight hundred thousand uh, dollars and eight thousand and four eight hundred thousand and four hundred dollars. Uh, so in that next series, whoever wins this is going to be going up against T1. And at this point, Evil Geniuses is the last team that started in the lower bracket remaining, um, and they would be the last one uh, there before getting eliminated. So uh, starting off, Evil Genius is off to a very hot start. They look really solid. It just looks like a classic EG game where they take full control of the map. Um, and they give their opponents no entrance whatsoever. They really look dominant in this game. They win 19 to 5. So Vici only putting up 5 kills, mainly just in the main stage, uh, in the uh, laning stage. And yeah, they win that one in 22 minutes on dire first pick. But they try and do the same thing again in game two. And it looks like it's working. They actually had a pretty considerable lead in game two. Uh, but then this game would end up being one of the more back and forth games that we've seen so far. This is definitely the most intense game we've had today. Uh, definitely the only one that I think is actually worth going back and re-watching if you really want to close back and forth game. It was the only one we really had today like that. And uh, yeah, Evil Geniuses, again, just ran a, a draft that they were really comfortable with that they just uh, would take early control with. But then they really struggled with going high ground or just taking objectives at a certain point. And Vici Gaming was actually able to repel them and have that game going back and forth for quite a while until Vici Gaming wins a crucial fight. Uh, Evil Geniuses are no longer able to defend and they take that one. So the series is tied at one. Uh, Evil Geniuses have shown that they've been really strong in that first game one. Uh, where they dominate Vici Gaming, and then Vici Gaming shows then again in Game 2 that they're able to actually uh, play against that strategy. So, how does Game 3 go? Well, it kind of starts off the same way as the previous two. Evil Genius is off to another solid start. Uh, Abed absolutely destroyed his mid lane. Um, Arteezy was making the proper rotations to the bottom lane and pressuring the Spectre on a lane. They killed that Spectre, uh, the Pollo Yo Spectre, so many times, too, in the early game. Um, they were really just giving him no outing on the map, no space whatsoever. But it was when they tried to go high ground, uh, that the flaws in the draft really started to show. They were playing against a Spectre with a Skywrath Mage on their team, so uh, whenever they would try and see high ground, they would just haunt and Im immediately kill the back lines on Evil Geniuses, 
and they had built up, uh, I believe, two Yule Scepters on their team. Uh, so whenever Arteezy's Troll Warlord would ult, uh, he would just get Yules up, and whenever he was BKB'd, they would just run away from him. So it was a really, really tough Troll Warlord game, and whenever he had Aegis, they would just kite him the entire time, and it was really just a showing of why Troll Warlord is kind of overlooked in this tournament. Um, he's just so easily countered by just a couple items, so the whole hero is kind of rendered useless with just a Halberd and a Yule Scepter, or even just two Yules, which is what um, VG Gaming had. Uh, so with those struggles to go high ground, inevitably Poyoyo's uh, Spectre just became way too big, way too much of a problem. They just couldn't kill him anymore. He just did way too much damage, especially with the Lycan buff that they were giving him. And so Evil Geniuses um, lose this game, a game that they had in their hands, and they just lost it. So uh, with that, Fiji Gaming secure top eight, and they will face the winner of our previous series that I just talked about, uh, T1. So they're facing off in the lower bracket. Uh, that's a series that's going to be taking place uh, not tomorrow, but the day after. And Evil Geniuses are now eliminated. Of course, they were the last team remaining of the lower bracket. So now none of these starting teams from the lower bracket are left. Uh, they earn 9th, 12th place, and $800,400. Um, so Evil Genius is definitely going home a lot earlier than I think anyone's expecting, myself included. Uh, I think that just goes to show how crazy um, TI is as a tournament. And now the question's asked, you know, with a disappointing result like this at TI, despite the fact they had such a fantastic year, are there going to be any roster changes? Are, are any players going to be leaving? Are we going to see a complete shuffle? Um, yeah, we're, I, I have a good feeling that we're going to be figuring that out within the next couple of weeks if they manage to stay together uh, until roughly the start of I'd say November or maybe the start of December, then they'll likely see it together for quite a while. But again, we'll have to see. Roster shuffles are usually crazy and sometimes very unexpected. Uh, so now jumping into our last two series of the day, we have the upper bracket matches. Uh, we had the second round obviously taking place and all that was left in the upper bracket uh, were the first and second seeds uh, from either group and they were actually playing against one another. Uh, so first off, we have Team Secret and IG, of course, like I said, uh, Team Secret was the second seed and Invictus Gaming was the first seed. Uh, they are from opposite groups, so they did not play against each other yet. And in game one and game two, it was pretty much the same thing. This was a very one-sided series, a lot more one-sided than I was expecting. Team Secret looks dominant. Um, Invictus Gaming just really looked outclassed. It was a real uh, outdraft, I found. I really was impressed watching Team Secret's draft. It's really uh, rare to see drafting as amazing as Team Secret's. Like, seriously, their drafting, their bands specifically were top-notch. All of their picks are really why I think Invictus lost this series. I don't think they necessarily played bad at any point. I just think they got out-strategized. So, uh, I won't get too much into the nitty-gritty of it because, like I said, it was a pretty one-sided series. Uh, Team Secret wins the first one in just over 30 minutes and the next one in just over 45. That one, that second one being a little bit longer, um, but at the end of the day, there really wasn't that much of a light at the end of the tunnel for Invictus. Um, so, uh, Team Secret secures top three for the first time in their history. Uh, Puppy, again, is finally back to the top three for the first time in eight years now. Uh, in over eight years, actually. Uh, where they will face the winner of our next series that we're going to get into. And Invictus Gaming are sent down to round four of the lower bracket, uh, where they will face off the winner of OG versus Spirit, which is a series that is happening tomorrow. Uh, notably tomorrow, all of the series that are taking place are all lower bracket elimination series. So it's going to be really intense uh, to see how that all shakes up. And next up, like I would mentioned, we have our series between PSG LGD versus Virtus Pro. Again, first seed against second seed of opposite groups. These two have not played against each other. And this was a series that I wasn't really expecting that Virtus Pro was going to be able to win it. But um, they did look pretty solid in game one. It wasn't necessarily a game that I think that they were close to winning. Um, but they were, definitely gave PSG a hard time. Uh, and then game two was, again, one of the more one-sided games of the day. There were quite a few of those. So uh, in game one, uh, VP ran one of their classic carry bristleback lineups, and just like how their carry bristleback lineups has done throughout the previously in the tournament, it starts off really strong, but eventually uh, the opposite team just ends up having damage, and then the bristleback doesn't look so scary anymore because you're able to lock him down and kill him before he can actually ramp up some stacks because he does usually build the Aghanim Scepter. Um, so uh, it does take PSG LGD a little bit of time to get to that point, but when they do, they end up winning the game at 43 minutes and 26 seconds with a total kill score of 34 to 20. They win that one on Radiant first pick. And then in game two, this was, again, just a pure domination from the side of PSG LGD. Uh, they just had a heal lineup with an Oracle and a Necrophos. And every single time Virtus Pro tried to jump the back lines or get any sort of pick off, there were just saves and heals galore. They just could not get anything. They could not find a single kill past the landing stage. 
And so they lose this one, again, very one-sided. And PSG LGD secures top three where they will play against Team Secret. So again, winner of that series will end up going to the grand finals. It's not taking place tomorrow. It's actually going to be on Saturday. But that's going to be a super fun series to watch. I'm, I'm very excited because Team Secret was the only team to actually take a game off of PSG LGD in the group stage. Uh, so they actually were tied one to one. And of course, there was no best of three in the group stage. So we didn't actually know who would, end up, who would have ended up winning that series. Um, so now I guess we're going to figure out which of the two is the stronger at that moment. Uh, Virtus Pro, uh, being the losers of this series, are now sent down to round four of the lower bracket where they will face the winner of T1 uh, versus Vici. I don't think this game is tomorrow. I think uh, Vici game, uh, Virtus Pro does not end up playing until Saturday as well. Um, so yeah, that was my review of day three of the TI-10 main stage. We are making our way further down um, the bracket. Like I mentioned, there are only eight teams remaining. And uh, yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, let me know which series you guys are most looking forward to. Maybe which one was the most exciting for you guys to watch. Uh, do you have any teams that are still in the tournament that you're really rooting for? Let me, all, let me know in the comment section down below. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Bye.